In the holy name of Jesus, amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Diane, Kathy, Cindy, Debbie, Nettie, Sherry, spouses, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, sisters, sister-in-laws, and brother-in-law. What a family. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior from sin and death. Amen. Mickey's confirmation verse is John 6, verse 68. You heard it just read, and is proclaimed for your hope and comfort. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Our dear sister Mickey went through her share of life's hills and valleys. In 92 years, it's almost like she lived multiple lifetimes. She was blessed with almost 50 years of holy matrimony to her beloved Edward. And like any marriage of two sinners that God loves, I'm sure they had their good days and their not-so-good days. And she was given to suffer his death along with you now 27 years ago. Our dear sister Mickey went through her share of life's hills and valleys. And that's life on the farm too, isn't it? It has its times of plenty and times of extraordinary need. Sometimes the weather cooperated and other times not. Sometimes the harvest and livestock grew and flourished and other times there was blight and drought. But through it all, God the Father saw that she and those entrusted to her, I think especially her family, were provided for. She was blessed with nine children, all gifts from God, the God of life. But raising children is hard work, with days and nights of meals and teachings and nurture. And I was going to say discipline, but I understand that was Dad's job. And so Mom and Dad live on in each of you. Their children, really their whole part, not just their good parts. And her love carries forward into the lives of all of you, even grand, great-grand, and great-great-grandchildren. You're all a kind of reflection of mom and grandma, or great or great-great-grandma. But it's not easy being a mom either. I think it's one of the greatest gifts, or excuse me, griefs, one of the greatest griefs for a mother, to have to bury your own child, not just once, not twice, but three times. She outlived Jeannie, Joe, and Dan, and also her grandson, Jacob. I know she suffered that grief, and she reminded me of them when she reminisced from all those photos in her, in her home. But God gave her more blessings, of course, and another 18 years of marriage to Gerald. I think you called him Jerry, is that right? Yeah. And again, the Lord took him to his eternal rest. And with that, then, more sorrow and grief. Our dear sister Mickey went through her share of life's hills and valleys. She knew life's ups and downs, but she also knew where to turn to see her through. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. There's always that danger that in the midst of life's trials and challenges, and even good times, that we would live our lives apart from Jesus and his word. When everything in our lives is going along as we'd like, or at least as close to some sense of normalcy that we want, we live as if we're self-sufficient and independent. But when life takes a turn for the worst and we suffer need, loss, sickness, or tragedy, as Mickey did, I think that's when we realize that we are actually dependent and rely on others for our well-being. So how does it usually go? We'll make a few calls when we're in need, quietly looking for help. Or if it's something more substantial these days, you launch a GoFundMe or host an event at the church to help pick up the pieces. When you're sick, you seek medical advice, and if it's serious, you might even get a second opinion or look to alternative treatments and then even put out a call for thoughts and prayers on social media. 
When tragedy strikes, we recognize that we often don't have the emotional or physical energy to respond. And days like today, I know especially for Mickey's daughters, looking to others to lean on and to support them. But as the need is satisfied or the loss is reclaimed or health is recovered or even that the weight of this day lifts, we are tempted to return to our old ways and living as if we don't need others and that we can take care of ourselves, thank you very much. The memory of those difficult times will fade and we fail to prepare as maybe we best could, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, for the next time. And so we think we finally escaped, but life in this fallen world will always have its piercing arrows. I'm sure on this day, the memory of bearing two brothers and a sister, a grandson, a father, a stepfather, a lot of those same feelings and emotions, even spiritual distress comes back. And so today is a day when we acutely know our need. And what the scripture says is that the Lord has brought us to this time of grief and sorrow and loss. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. As Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And maybe you've already tried to find some solace and answers and encouragement everywhere else than God's word. And they might help a little bit. The cards and the emails and the flowers and all the other condolences, they soothe the soul a bit. Even the sentimental songs and the platitudes and the well wishes ease the pain some. But none of them really last. We need real comfort for our grief. We need real hope in the face of death. We need a real joy that answers for our sorrow. We need objective truth from outside ourselves that says that there are more and better things in store for us and for those who love the Lord. And so God has brought us all near to this day by the Spirit to hear his word that gives comfort and hope and encouragement that we can find nowhere else but in Jesus and his word. We need a real God who overcomes our sinful rebellion, frees us from death, and defeats the powers of darkness. We need Jesus. We need Jesus who forgives us. We need Jesus who breaks the chains of hell. We need Jesus who guides and encourages and supports and rescues us as we travel through the valley of the shadow of death. And we need a Jesus who will wake us up from our sleep in death, resurrected, whole, and alive again on the last day. It's these promises of God fulfilled for Mickey, that are the only thing that can give us lasting relief for today and for tomorrow and for the rest of our lives until he comes again. Remember Mickey's confirmation verse. Lord, to whom shall we go? You, you alone have the words of eternal life. The Apostle Peter was right. There's no one else that we, that who can give us the kind of comfort and hope that his promises give us this day. So here again, Jesus' promises for Mickey and for all those who trust in him. He said to Mickey at the font, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And with that baptism, he promised to never leave her or forsake her. And he's kept that promise. He promised to repent her sin and to forgive it with his shed blood. He promised never to be silent but to gather her into his church to hear his voice. And in his teaching and preaching, Mickey was raised up in faith toward God and love for you and for all those given to her to love. And in his body and blood, Jesus confirmed for Mickey that he would never stop strengthening and preserving her in faith and hope. And that preserved her until finally, on Tuesday, she confessed her sins, heard the word of forgiveness, was comforted in the gospel of the whole account of Jesus' death and resurrection, and, nodding her head, looked forward to the heavenly vision revealed in St. John's revelation. Jesus blessed her with the song of Simeon, telling her that she could die in the peace of her sins forgiven. And I don't think we knew 
but it would just be that night that Jesus would give her a blessed death and she would depart in the Lord's peace. His word for her fulfilled. Now those aren't just fancy church words to make you feel better. They're not empty platitudes or sentimental songs. It's the God on, God's honest truth given to us for our hope and comfort and joy and consolation this day. So as you grieve today and tomorrow and in a year, until your last day, may your faith be that of St. Peter and of Mickey. Listen and receive Jesus in his church where he's promised for you. Remember the eternal truth. Lord, to whom shall we go? You and you alone have the words of eternal life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Diane, Kathy, Cindy, Debbie, Nettie, Sherry, spouses, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, indeed all family and friends. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus and by his word. Amen. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through his servant, Mickey Lockman. Mickey was given life by her creator and was born on April 10, 1930, the daughter of parents Paul and Lydia Mayer. She received the gift of holy baptism and became a child of God on April 20, 1930. On April 11, 1943, she publicly confessed her, month, or her faith and was confirmed. She liked the month of April, apparently. She regularly received the gracious gift of the Lord's life-giving body and blood on the, in the Holy Supper. And on April 27, 1946, she received the gift of a beloved companion and her husband, Edward Trott. She again married Gerald Lockman on April 15, 19, or 2000. She was blessed with the gift of children, Jeanette, Diane, Joseph, Daniel, Kathleen, Cynthia, Deborah, Annette, and Cheryl. Twelve grandchildren, 24 great-grandchildren, and 12 great-great-grandchildren. God blessed Mickey's life with many special people as she served God in her vocations at home, church, work, and in the community. Finally, on November 29, 2022, God blessed Mickey with a holy death and took her home to rest in the arms of Jesus to await the resurrection of the dead. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks to God our Father through Jesus Christ our Lord for our sister, Mickey.